What is up, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls? It's your boy Goblin, and today we're coming in with an absolute banger of a video. Hope you guys enjoy this one. Drop a like if you do. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. And also, head over to Goblin420.com and grab yourself some merch today. YouTube just demonetized me, so the merch purchases help more than ever. They've done this to me twice now, but screw them. Hey, go cop some merch today at Goblin420.com. High quality, fast shipping, great prices and every purchase comes with a personalized thank you message. Thank you guys for watching this video, and real quick, let's take a moment for our sponsor. If you're looking for an easy New Year's resolution, make your goal to double up and get a head start with MyBookie's Deposit Match Bonus. By going to MyBookie and using code GOBLIN on sign up, you can get your initial deposit doubled up to $1,000. With the extra dough, you're ready to go in on some of the biggest games of the week, and MyBookie has all the best action. We've got the playoff race in the final stretch, and there's plenty of high stakes games to choose from. Be sure to not miss out on the action and head over to MyBookie today, and don't forget to sign up using code GOBLIN to match your first deposit up to a thousand. Bet anything, anytime, anywhere with my bookie. Big thanks to them. Now let's dive into the video. Now, for those of you guys who follow me on Twitter, Instagram, or my other socials, which, by the way, you should, I you might know by now that I've been in Vegas for the past almost two weeks, actually. I spent, like, nine days in Vegas, eight or nine days, and then after Vegas, I went to L.A., and I actually just filmed another podcast with Yola, which you guys will be able to watch this Monday, but... Before I went to LA, like I just said, I spent quite a bit of time in Vegas. And while I don't think I'm going to do a whole series about every single day in Vegas, this is arguably one of the most eventful 24-hour periods during my time in Vegas. And I knew that this deserved a video. So that's exactly what's happening. Now, some of you guys might be wondering, by the title of this video, where the part comes in where I get caught smoking in the hotel room. We're going to get to that. But to be fair, I haven't even decided on a title for this yet, so maybe it won't even include that part. So surprise, I just gave part of the story away. But either way, let's dive into it. So we're going to start this off with a, a late night before the big day where I got caught smoking in my room. The night prior to this, you know, I was kind of feeling a little little gutsy, a little ready to go. And, you know, how I like to gamble is I like to feel it in my gut. I'm not a big strategic cards player, you know? I, I like to play cards, but I don't have, like, the strategy down pat. I gamble for fun, you know? I sit down, and I'm, an, yeah, I'm an idiot with it, but so what? You know, I like to get belligerently drunk and make irresponsible bets. Because when I win while I'm belligerently drunk, it's very fun. And when I lose, it can still be very fun, because I'm so drunk, I might not remember it the next day. So the night before, I was up, and I was playing slots a little bit, and I was with Ashley. And Ashley and I went back up to my hotel room, and she wasn't really feeling the best. She was a little tired, so she wanted to go to sleep. She wasn't feeling too good off the drinks we had. So I was like, all right, sounds good. She went to sleep for a little bit, but I couldn't sleep. I could not fall asleep, and I didn't know what to do with myself. So I opted to get back up and go downstairs myself. Now, we'd been chilling in the room, and I'd been kind of sitting there watching TV while she was sleeping for a solid three or four hours, you know, quite a while. So at this point, it was like 5 a.m., and I decided to venture out and go downstairs because in Vegas, it's like magic. All of the, all of the bars are 24-hour damn near, and if you sit at a table or a slot, they'll bring you free drinks. So I'm walking downstairs, and I'm ready to rumble. I'm not really buzzed anymore. I'm pretty sober. I just smoked a couple bowls in my room before I came down, but even with that, I wasn't super stoned. I was really ready to get drunk and make some irresponsible decisions. So I go downstairs, and I sit at the roulette table, and I start off with some small bets. I'm doing like, you know, four five dollars on red or on black and you know just kind of getting a feel for the roulette seeing how it's going and of course there's only like one lady down there serving drinks because the casino is a ghost town it's five in the morning and it's a weekday it was like a goddamn wednesday morning so there was nobody down there except the absolute sleazy degenerates just like me so it was kind of perfect 
I drank a couple rum punches, and then after that, you know, I, I was starting to get some real bad luck at the roulette table, but I hadn't gone too hard on the bets yet, so I wasn't too worried about it. I left the table, and I went over to a bar, and I was like, you know, I'm just gonna drink. I'm just gonna chill out, you know, kind of kind of think about what I want to do. And there was a couple other people at the bar with me. We were a bit far apart. There was maybe three or four of us at the bar, which was more than I expected for this time in the morning. There was this guy to the right of me in particular who was really giving me some weird vibes. He was absolutely drunk out of his mind, you could tell. And he was talking to the bartender, and he just kept going on about his losses. And it got really, really uncomfortable. Because after about 10 minutes, when I had finished my first drink, he started, like crying about it like not full-on sobbing but like you could hear it in his voice his voice was quivering quivering pardon me he's sniffling a lot this guy just could not keep himself together he was losing it and I'm looking over and I'm like yo if anyone's shooting this joint up it's this guy I gotta get drunker before I die you know so I order another drink Now, I'm doing double shots in every single one of my drink, and my go-to when I don't know what to get at a bar is a vodka cranberry. A bit basic, yeah, but, like, you can't really fuck it up. And I feel like the cranberry juice just gets rid of all the vodka taste, so you can get dangerously drunk on those little fuckers. So my go-to when I don't know what to get, if it's not a rum punch, is gonna be a vodka cran, and that's where I fucked up. I had just drank some rum punches and now I'm mixing alcohols. And that never ends well for me. I almost always get a brutal hangover whenever I mix and end up puking. But at this point, I didn't care. Dude next to me's face down at the bar crying over his poker losses. I want to get so drunk I can't read. The guy to my left is dressed like Young Thug. He's got like a garden hat on and the sickest blue suit I've ever seen. I am with an absolute entourage of legends. I'm at this bar and I'm like, yeah, this is the best environment to get so wasted I don't remember these people luckily I did remember these people so I got a few more drinks in and I'm I'm maybe three or four drinks in and I'm pretty fucked up at this point and the weird guy who was crying started talking to me a little bit he caught him he got himself together a little bit you know he, he got himself together enough to at least have a, a fair conversation with me. So he's chatting a little bit, and we're talking about, like, why each of us are in Vegas and that kind of stuff. And he mentioned that he was on break for school, that he was in college. So we were chatting a little bit. I don't fucking remember what he was going to school for, but I remember he just mentioned that he went to school and he was on a break. So I was like, oh, you know, like, what, like, did you lose all your, like, how bad did you lose, bro? Like, you seem pretty down about it. I think I triggered him. He told me something brutal. He said, you know, I took a good chunk of my student loans and brought them here. I'm sitting there and I'm like, oh, buddy. Oh, buddy, boy, that's not a good decision. I get why you're crying now. Uh, You're going to be eating that debt for a long time. I get why you're crying now. So I kind of left him be after that. You know, we wrapped up our conversation. The other young thug looking fly ass motherfucker to my left had nothing to say to us, which I didn't mind. You know, like have your drinks, mind your business. Totally cool. Now, this is the point of the story where it gets a little messy. I only remember, like, brief moments from this night. So I'm going to piece it together the best I can for you guys. I haven't been true blackout drunk in a very long time. This was a absolute blackout drunk moment. So, I know by looking at my credit card statement that I never actually closed my tab, and I don't remember doing it either, because they ran all the drinks, like, individually. But I remember at the beginning, to keep an open tab, they just had to run my card once, and they gave it back to me, and they were like, oh yeah, we'll apply all the charges. So by looking at my bank statement the next day, I realized that I must have had at least eight or nine drinks at the bar, and they might have rung an extra one up for a tip, because I left early. Sorry guys, I feel bad about that part, but like, I was wasted. I was not coherent enough to write, I probably would have tipped that guy a million dollars, dude. I couldn't, co- I, like, numbers would not have made sense to me at that point, right? But I left the bar, and here's the part I do remember. I remember leaving the bar and going up to the elevator. And I remember while I was waiting for an elevator in the lobby, I'm kind of leaning up against the door. Very unsafe. Dumb thing to do. There are six elevators in this fucking lobby, and I just so happen to be leaning against the one that ends up opening. 
So as it opens, I can barely stand up to begin with. I don't know how I walked over on my own, because I remember this part too. Towards the end of being at the bar, I kept trying to ask for a vodka cranberry, but vodka cranberry is a big word when you're drunk. So I just kept saying another one. But as I, you know, I was leaning on the elevator, the one I was leaning on happened to open, and I ate shit falling into that elevator. My glasses are, like, widened now. Like, I fucked up the little arms on them. I ate shit. There was no chance of saving myself. Fell right into the railing. Hurt like a bitch. So I fell down and I recovered a little bit, and thank God, like I mentioned earlier, there was barely anyone in this lobby, so no one seemed to notice my fall. So I kind of recover and I went back up to my room. Now, I don't really remember too much of getting to my room, but I do remember throwing up quite a lot. I also ended up passing out on the bathroom floor, unable to make it to the bed. So Ashley had to bring a blanket and a pillow to, to wrap me in on the bathroom floor because it was very cold. I know this because she has a picture of me wrapped in that blanket on the bathroom floor that she showed me, which was hilarious and fucked. But nevertheless, that's how I found out about that part. I eventually made it back to bed somehow because the next morning I woke up in bed. And this is where the real fucked part begins. So I woke up with a brutal hangover, right? I felt like shit. The obvious solution was to smoke hella fucking weed. And luckily Vegas has dispensaries, so I went to the cookies dispensary, which is tax, by the way. If you're going to Vegas and you, you want to get weed, go off the strip. I learned that the hard way. Don't go to any dispensary on the strip. You're going to get fucked. But I was lazy and went to one that was very expensive. So I went to the cookies that's, that's like right on the strip, right? So I had a very fair amount of weed. I had Gary Payton. I had some runs. I had all sorts of shit. So I rolled up a couple blunts. And mind you, the entire duration of this trip, I had the privacy light turned on on my room, which normally at a hotel, that's not a problem. I don't like room service coming in my room. So I leave the privacy thing on at every hotel I'm at for usually the whole duration of this stay, with the exception of when I order room service. That's the only time I'll take it off. But most of the time, I always have it on. What I didn't realize is in Vegas, they will come check on you if your privacy light has been on for too long because they think you killed yourself. I guess suicide is like a big thing in Vegas because people lose a bunch of money, you know, like problem gamblers, and they're like, fuck it, we out, you know? So I didn't realize that policy at the time, and my privacy light had been on for pretty much the whole duration of my stay. So to deal with my hangover on this particular morning, I rolled a few blunts, and I just hotboxed the shit out of my room. Ashley and I were smoking bowls, blunts, we were taking dabs, we had a little nectar collector, we were doing the whole gamut, we were smoking the room out. And I will say what was nice is the doors to these rooms were so heavy that you couldn't smell shit from the outside. We'd walk in our room and it would reek, but from the hallway, you wouldn't smell a damn thing. So I really don't think anyone from the hallway ever noticed or said anything because there's just no way. However, the worst timing ever, not even 15 minutes after I put out that second blunt, 10, 15 minutes, there's a knock on my door. Now, I figure it's just housekeeping. I don't think much of it. So I go look through the peephole, and it is not housekeeping. It is two people, an old man and a woman, and they are in suits. They are fly, and they don't look very happy. They look almost concerned. And I initially, I don't answer. I'm like, whatever, maybe they'll think I'm just not in the room and they'll go away. But they just kept banging on the fucking door. So I'm sitting there, and I'm like, oh, shit. Now, I open up the door in nothing but my boxers, and they immediately, the first thing they say is, oh, your privacy light's been on. We just wanted to check if you were okay. Before I could even respond to that, the woman that's standing with the guy is like, it smells like you've been smoking in there. Do you have any marijuana in there? I deny everything. The classic tactic, I'm like, nope, absolutely not. I've got nothing. Nothing to my name. Fuck all. No shot. They start going off on some spiel. They're like, oh, we can smell it. Like, you know, we have the right to do room inspections. You know, do you mind if we come in? Like, we're going to come in. We have the right to do it. So I tell them, I'm like, yeah, just let me get dressed. I'm in my underwear. So I close the door, right? And I immediately run over to the bed and I like wake up Ashley because she'd fallen back asleep. And I'm like, Ashley, 
The fucking feds are here damn near. So we start stuffing weed into our luggage. We're like, they're not going to search our luggage. They obviously can't. You know, what are they going to do? Walk in the room and say it smells? Like, who cares? But at this point, I'm not as concerned about a smoking fee. I was more worried about them trying to make me leave, you know? That's what I was concerned about. Because I spent New Year's in Vegas. So even if they refunded the remainder of my stay, it would have been impossible to find somewhere else to go. Everything was booked. And if I found something somewhere else, it would have cost like double what it normally did. I booked this at a really good time, so I got a fair deal. So I was like, yo, please, just God, don't, don't try to boot me, dude. Like, come on. So I'm in the room, and I'm stuffing all my weed and all my dabs and bags. Ashley's doing the same thing, and we've got it all hidden, and I open the door. Now they come in, and they just stand in the doorway. They don't even walk all the way in the room. They just walk. They inch a little closer into the doorway. They're standing right in front of our bathroom, which is by the front of the door. And they're just like, oh, yeah, it fucking reeks in here, dude. That That's the gist of what they had to say. They're just like, yeah, it fucking stinks in here. We're going to add a $500 smoking charge to your room. Now, at first, I'm kind of pissed. I'm like, fuck off, dude. Like, 500 bucks? That's crazy, you know? Like, like we're in Vegas, for God's sake. People, like... People fuck prostitutes in these rooms, and probably some of them have crabs, and you're more concerned about my blunt? But at this point, I'm just grateful they're not kicking me out, so I'm just like, okay, sounds good. And they leave the room, and of course, I get billed for $500 more. Now, at that point, obviously, if I'm already getting charged for a smoking fee... I have to get my money's worth. So I spent the whole rest of the trip just smoking big blunts in there. Big giant doinks. Absolutely no hesitation. Because what are they going to do? Add another one? No. So I'm in that bitch chilling. I'm smoking big blunts the whole rest of the trip. But I just want to share a quick little story. You know, one, one of my favorite days in Vegas. And the story of how I got caught smoking in my room there. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Drop a like if you did. Don't forget to check out the merch at Goblin420.com. Thank you guys for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Peace out, gamers.